starting at 1.40 p.m. Uh, we have Adam Williamson of Red Hat, and the topic of his session is dependency and input testing in Fedora. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Adam Williamson. I lead the quality team. We're trying to rebrand from QA. QA quality, you'll, you'll hear both team at Fedora. Um, I've been working on Fedora testing for 15 years now for my sins. Um, so back in the days when we didn't have containers and testing was just booting six virtual machines a day and running installs and stuff. So I've been through a lot of this stuff. Um, this talk is going to be Linux distribution-y. Um, it's maybe going to assume you know some things in Fedora. If there's any quick thing, like I say a term, you don't know what it is, feel free to ask and I will explain. More substantial questions, please hold for the end. So here we go. I want to start out by talking about, the talk is going to be about some things we're not testing, but let's start out just a quick go over what we are testing. Um, so first thing we do, we do test pull requests. So say you're building anything. You're building a distribution. You're building a software. You're just building an application. The first thing is going to be pull requests. So we do test those. This is a pull request to our so-called dist git, which is where anything in Fedora, any package in Fedora starts out. Um, and here we go. We ran some tests on it. Some of them passed. Some of them failed. Yay. So that's a thing that happens. Um, the things we test are does it build, scratch build, does it install, installability. Dist git test is sort of a test that are specific to this package. They may exist, they may not, they could do anything. Zool uh, kind of duplicates the scratch build thing, which is, we'll get into that later. Um, so what comes after a pull request? Package build and updates. You know, once you've put all your pull requests together, you want to build a package, you do a package build, you create, in Fedora we have this thing called updates, which is, you, maybe you need to change five packages all together, and you don't want, we don't want everything to go straight into the distribution like it used to back when I started. Uh, we want feedback. We want people to be like, hey, that doesn't work. So updates are where you bundle package builds together and get feedback on them before they go into the distribution. So in Fedora, um, tests can run on packages or on updates, but you get feedback for both in the update system. So this is a screenshot of Bodhi, our update system, and it's showing, you know, 54, uh, 64 tests passed, 10 failed. That was a weird thing on this update because I took the screenshot yesterday, but usually they all pass. Um, yeah, there you go, tests, they're great. Um, you do, 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 do. Some of these tests are also gating, which is, you know, good. Um, mainly the ones, um, the update dots, whatever tests, those actually gate, which means the update will not go out if they fail. None of the diskit tests are technically gating, I don't think. Well, maybe you can set that up in Pagger. I've never looked. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh. People don't, yeah. yeah. And the Fedora CI tests there, just as a note, they're coming from the same system as the results on the pull requests. They just get kind of run at a different level, which is nice. So OK, we test builds and updates. What comes after builds and updates? Composes come after builds and updates. Once we've got a bunch of packages and we're like, we like these packages, we're going to make a distribution out of them. We do a compose, which is putting them all together. Uh, and we test those too. Uh, this is a screenshot from OpenQA, the test system I maintain, where it's testing the Fedora Rawhide snapshot from three days ago. I took this screenshot because the recent ones have a bunch of failed tests because we're doing branching, so this looks better. But yeah, there you go, just over 300 tests that are run. We test the cloud image. We test a whole bunch of other images. We do a lot of functionality testing on composes once they're done. Does it boot? Does it install? Does the desktop work? Can you run a container? Can you do all sorts of toolbox? Does that work? There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Um, and this is the same system as the update.star tests. Those are just a subset of these tests that get run on every update. So you know. We're doing pretty good, right? We test all the way through the package lifecycle. Nothing could possibly break with this whole setup. There's, you know, we've covered it. We're done. I can retire. It's perfect, right? Well, kind of. Uh, what don't we do? Well, one big thing we don't do is reverse dependency testing. Um, yes, Neil, I feel the same. Uh, <laughs> Here is a code composed from July, which failed. Uh, I had to go back to July to get a good example, but hey, it's not that long ago. 
Yeah, it's Doom. Uh, Doom sounds good, right? We like things that are doomed. Yeah, no. So why did this fail? Uh, well, it failed because of a dependency issue. Oh, this is annoying. Um, Mutter, which is a graphics library in GNOME, got updated. Uh, but the th there's a thing there, you can, yeah, you can probably read it, called GNOME Kiosk. And you can kind of see from this message it cuts off because the display is dumb. But um, GNOME Kiosk needs something that Mutter provides. And GNOME Kiosk did not get rebuilt for this new version of Mutter. Uh, GNOME Kiosk is used by the Fedora installer. So when the Compose went to build an installer image, it all blew up because it couldn't install GNOME Kiosk because the dependencies weren't satisfied. So we were sad. We got a fail compose. Um, so what might have let us catch this, you know, systematically before it happened? Two things, actually. Um, reverse dependency testing as a generic concept and also uh, gating on two of those tests that you saw earlier, installability and RPM debt tests. Um, as a side note, OpenQA actually should have caught this, um, and I fixed that since, but that's kind of a side note. Even There are cases which OpenQA is not going to catch, and we need better systematic tests for those. So what is reverse dependency testing? At root, it's pretty simple. Um, if B depends on A, test B when A changes. So you know, when Mutter changes, we should have tested that GNOME Kiosk was still installable. And we didn't, because we're bad. Um, <laughs> so if GNOME Kiosk, yes, thanks. Thanks, Neil. Thanks for the vote of confidence. <laughs> so if, if we had reverse dependency testing, we would have run GNOME Kiosk's installability test when the Mutter update happened, and we would have caught this. Um, and hopefully, you know, not blown, blown up a compose. Um, what else might have helped? So there is something else. Sorry, I have to keep looking down my laptop because presenter mode is broken, so I'm having to switch slides on my own. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So if we'd gated... Um, so, the so another thing, the other thing I mentioned, we need to gate these tests. As I mentioned before, we don't gate on these tests at the moment. I said we run them on pull requests, but they don't gate the pull requests. We run them on packages, but these tests don't gate package builds and updates. Um, so if we had gating on those and we had reverse dependency testing, the installability test would have caught this. We also have the RPM deplint test in itself is kind of interesting because it's it's sort of a reverse dependency test in a little box just for dependencies. Uh, so RP, we already have an RPM deplint test which is supposed to say on an update to package A, does this cause dependency problems for any other package in the distribution? So in theory, if we gated on RPM deplint, it would have caught this problem in Mutter and you know blocked the update. So we have these tests. They're great tests. Why aren't we gating on them already? Like, that would have solved the problem, right? You know, we wouldn't have had an issue. Well, reasons. Uh, there are reasons. So here are some of the reasons. This is three screenshots sort of slapped together on one slide. I'm happy that Ming just walked in uh, because I was, I was her speaker coach, and her slide deck was way better than mine, which is why I redid this whole thing last night. So. If I run over, it's uh, probably my fault for writing a bad slide deck. But hey, there you go. Um, so number one up here is an RPM deplint failure. This isn't the kind of thing we were talking about. This isn't a juicy dependency problem that we want to catch. This is, this is weird. This is an undeclared file conflict between the current version of the package on x86-64 and the previous version of the package on i686. I don't know why we're failing on this. Honestly, I haven't had time to look into it yet, but it it's. No, yeah. Um, but the thing is, that package, sysprof captured devel, is from the old build. It shouldn't be comparing this against that old build anyway, because there's a sysprof captured devel in the new build as well. Go ahead, Neil. So there are Neil's two things. Neil's going to school me. Yeah, so there's two <laughs> things going on here. The first is that the current repo before this thing is integrated and the repo where this thing is integrated are both accessible in this environment at the same time. Second, the new sysprof devel didn't obsolete the old one, so the names were all conflicting. Second, it's actually a That's multi- third. It was third. Sorry, this is a multi-arch <laughs> failure because the headers were not correctly multi-arch saved, so it conflicts because the content actually changed between the two because the packages are supposed to be multi-arch safe, but they're not. Fourth, 
<laughs> this is what we deal with. <laughs> Fourth, this is uh, because file conflicts are not checked when updates are submitted. They're only checked after they're released, which is why we have this problem. So like when you do a package build and Koji like tags them all in, before we get it to Bodhi, we don't actually check to make sure that the various packages don't conflict. Well, there are ways to do it, and Koji can do it for some parts of it, but it can't do it. It doesn't do it for all of them. Okay. I don't think that gets everything, because RPM Deplin itself is written to try and ignore the, even though it's in the environment, RPM Deplin is supposed to only consider the new packages. So I think there's something broken in why it's comp comparing against the old. But anyway, this is the point. We're getting there's hundreds of these <laughs> failures in the system which makes it hard to say, we should gate on that because we have to get, get this and then get Neil or me to look at it and go, what the hell is going on there? Yeah, and we haven't done that, so. Number two, check on the orange one. That's just a test system failure. Like, tests failed to run. See, nothing for details. That's a problem. This can be an infrastructure problem. Well, hey, the link's there, but these happen is the point. And there's no, at the moment, we don't have an auto rerun for Fedora CI. It just, the failure's just there. We don't have really any humans watching and saying, oh, hey, that test failed, I'd better restart it. As a package maintainer, you just have to notice you had a failure, investigate yourself, find it was a test system breakage, and hit a stupid rerun test button, which reruns every single test for your package, which is, and then wait two hours. And then wait two hours. Yeah, so again, another reason we're not gating on stuff. Um, yeah, that too. There's a lot of problems here. I, I, I don't want to, I've, I've only got 35 minutes, so I'm trying to blow through this. We could do this for hours. Uh, number three, this is one I found last night while I was hastily rewriting my slide deck. Um, there's, an in, there's something in the system for the installability test which intentionally skips SE Linux policy, I guess because it's a special unicorn. Um, but this gets reported as a failure to results DB, which is the results storage system. So the CI system knows it's skipping it on purpose, but the results system thinks that was a failure. So, you know, the test gets a, the package gets a failed test. If we were gating, SE Linux policy could never be released, which would, you know, probably be bad. I have more reasons. Um, this slide is a messier sequel to the original, as per the tradition, so it's through the reasons to electric boogaloo. Um, you know, look over here on the left, Angry Jenkins. See, the CI just doesn't keep logs very long. So if you went on vacation and you came back to see that one of your builds had failed and you clicked to see the logs, they're probably gone, which also isn't great. Um, this top right is the thing I mentioned. Like, there's so many of these. These were just examples, but it's, this is testing everything. So if you're just going in and saying, well, look, I want to look at all the failures. Are they real? Are they false? You get flooded. We don't know what they all are. Um, the installability test fails on um, downgrade. So if the package can't be downgraded, that's a check that this test does. It will report that as a failure, which is a problem if you're sending an update to fix a package that fails to install, because the downgrade test will always <laughs> fail. So we can't get on installability because of that. We have a whole ticket about problems in the installability test that we know are there. No one has had the time to fix them yet. Um, was that the whole slide? Yeah, so just that ticket. Um, oh, and by the way, what about that mutter bug? You remember how I said technically the RPM deplint test should have caught that? Well, let's see, did it? Uh, I mean, this looks good. You know, we, I went and found the update, I looked at the test results, and there's mutter, and there's a failure for RPM deplint. Looks like we got something right, yay. Uh, if you go and look at the log, this is the failure. It's an undeclared file conflict in GNOME shell extension system monitor. Wait, weren't we looking at Mutter? Like, what is going on here? Um, the problem is that the Mutter build is part of a bigger update, which has, you know, five or six packages in it. And if you look, every package in that update has this same failure of RPM Deplin because of a conflict in one of the packages in that update, which, that's a real failure, and none of them have any other failures. So I don't know if the test actually also found the dependency problem but just didn't report it, or if it just bailed at this point and never got to finding. Point is, Did you it, get lucky or not? Yeah, the point is, you know, it's not doing what we're hoping it should do, or at least we can't tell that it is. I haven't had time. Um, I was literally this morning, one of my tabs in the huge backlog of tabs on here is like, well, what the hell is the RPM Deplin? Because 
This is the other problem with CI. There's an RPM Deplint um, pipeline which goes to Jenkins, which then tells testing farm to run RPM Deplint. And then there's the RPM Deplint source code itself. So right now, I'm trying to figure out how exactly does testing farm run RPM Deplint? That's where I'm up to in trying to debug this. So, you know, live progress. <laughs> yeah, well, no, probably someone in testing farm does, but hey. So yeah, you know, that doesn't work either. So for all these reasons, we are not gating on these tests yet. Anyway, what else aren't we testing? There's more. Um, oh boy. Yeah, <laughs> non-package inputs. So Neil knows all about this and you get a, no, 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 you, you, get a brown, you get a gold star in a minute. So, you know, hold on for that. Um, non-package inputs, I, you know, I talked to you through building a package, that's how we build a distribution, but that's not the only thing that goes into building a distribution. So we have, for instance, comps. Comps is the thing where we say, these packages are in these groups. What's in the GNOME group? What's in the KDE group? What's in the installer group? If you, these are the pull requests to comps. There's four open, there's hundreds merged. If we go to one of those, there is no CI. Like, there's literally zero CI results. So if we, the way we tell whether merging that change breaks the distribution is we merge it, we run a compose, yes, it is YOLO CI, yes. We merge it, we run a compose, and we see if everything explodes, which isn't great. Kickstarts, same deal. Kickstarts are sort of the recipes for building images. Uh, yeah, Michael. Apple packages, um, yeah, that's true. We, we, yeah, we don't do any testing on Apple packages. So hey, um, so Kickstarts, yeah, it's um, same deal. There is some very thin. Uh, oh no, Comps has some very thin, like sanity test or something. Kickstarts, don't even have, Kickstarts have nothing at all. So basically, for all of these things, we just merge and change, see what blows up. Um, these are two examples of non-package inputs. Uh, there are more. I made a non, -comp a very uncomprehensive list. Pungy, Fedora, Pungy IoT are the composed definitions themselves. Workstation OS tree config is kind of like comps for, um, for immutable images. Yeah, it's wildly incorrectly named now, but never mind. The composed scripts are just bash scripts. You know, we change them, they may blow up. Who knows? Uh, Fedora Kiwi Descriptions, here is Neil's gold star. Fedora Kiwi Descriptions is a newer form of recipe like Kickstarts, but for a new tool, Kiwi, and that has tests. When you submit a pull request, it builds some images and sees if it works. So, great job, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Great job. Um, anywho, that's all the stuff we're not doing. Why aren't we doing all of this stuff? I've covered some of it already. Um, so, this is this is an older slide now. That was the new material. Now we're into the older material. Um, for generic CI test gating, that's what we just covered, right? Accuracy. Sometimes the test is wrong. Reliability, sometimes the test system blows up. Ease of investigation, I didn't really have slides for, but I just mentioned it kind of to Matt. It's like the tests go through Jenkins, then they go to testing farm, and when you click on your results, you, you get a link to somewhere, and it may have the reason you got a failure, or it may be you have to click on a URL buried 500 characters in to find the actual reason for your failure. It's just not a great experience in the CI tests. So that's another reason we're not gating on it yet. Um, reverse dependency testing, mechanism there is a fancy word for we just didn't build it yet. Like, we, you know, someone needs to come up <laughs> with a design and make it. We, we, didn't even, we don't even have a design yet. Well, the uh, script actually does reverse dependency testing. Yeah, it kind of does, but I think, I think this a while ago. Yeah, but that's designed to run on a compose. Um, attribution, the, that's the other problem is, okay, even if we run the test, we have to come up with a way of saying, reporting it back in the right way. So you know um, the maintainer of A gets a message that says, okay, I ran the test of C because C depends on A, and they failed, so that means you have a problem in A. We don't really have that yet. Uh, Non-package input testing, again, kind of the same thing. We just, we need to figure out how we want to do it. We have this giant pile of non-package input input re repos, do we put tests in each one like Neil did with Kiwi? Do we try and come up with some kind of central system which is like, it's a thing for pretending to do composes and it knows about all these repos? 10 minutes, thank you. Just a lot of design questions. I think dry run mechanisms might be useful. Like, so you could tell Pungy nearly do a compose, right? Like resolve all the dependencies and blah, blah, but cut all the really slow steps that make it take six hours. 
that might be useful. Don't but download all the facts. Right, that kind of thing. But you know, that's another thing that we don't have yet. So there's, there's a lot of roadblocks. How do we go about addressing all these roadblocks? Ideas, I have some. Um, so for this is the one where I got the furthest. This is what I'm talking about where, OK, we should gate on RPM, Deplin, and installability, essentially. Um, and my, as I mentioned, the big problem with this is there are thousands of packages in Fedora, and there are hundreds and hundreds or thousands of failures of these tests. And if you get into trying to make it more accurate, you drown in a sea of failures. So my big idea is to define like the compose critical package set uh, which is the thing we can do and just try and say these are the 1,000 or 2,000 packages that actually can cause a Fedora Compose to blow up. And we'll just care about those. And then once you have that set, go back and look at the past results of these tests against only those packages and try to resolve all the problems. Um, and to make this talk current, maybe we could do that with AI. Yay, OK. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, try and sort of try and narrow the focus so we have an attackable surface instead of trying to fix all the problems in all the packages. So that's kind of my plan there. Um, so for reverse dependency testing, I, this is much less fleshed out because for these two things, honestly, I wasn't planning to work on it, um, which we'll get to in a minute. But you know, basically do all the things actually come up with a design, check that we have enough capacity to do it, because this is going to be a huge amount of load. Figure out the reporting thing. Extend the gating mechanism is an issue. Um, someone pointed this out. We don't have regression-based gating in Fedora, so we can't say block this update only if a test fails that wasn't failing before. You can only say block this update if the test fails. If the test was already failing, that's a problem. So that's a thing we might need. Basically, yeah, it's like there's no, yeah, it doesn't, the gating mechanism has no concept of the previous state, yeah. Um, and consider who's going to handle the failures. Okay, if we do all these tests, who is going to fix it? Do we dump it on the packages? Do we have a SIG that maybe investigates them? It's a lot of questions. Non-package input testing, again, this is more or less do it, uh, but yeah, <laughs> figure the all out all of the non-package <laughs> inputs, because... Yeah, because I don't know all of them. I probably do know all of them at some level, but I don't have a really comprehensive list. The design question I just mentioned, dry run modes. Repo metadata overlay is a fancy word for, um, I would like to be able to pretend we have the new repo. Like right now, so in OpenQA, when we do testing on a package, we uh, grab the package, put it in a side repo, run an update. The problem with that is the old version of the package is still there in the main repo. And that can cause the outcome to be different than if we actually land the package and now only the new package is in the repo. I'd like a way to simulate the, 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 the after case in the before state, essentially. And the bottom one is a giant asterisk. You've seen the conflux table out in the hall. Um, possibly conflux is going to come and solve all our problems. Conflux is a much newer sort of con it is. It's newer than Koji and Pungy. A newer idea of how to compose things, basically. And there's an idea that it's going to come along. We're going to replace Koji, Pungy, Bodhi, everything with Conflux, and it'll make it better. So we have to consider against that whether we actually want to be going too far. So progress. Uh, how am I doing with these great ideas I have? You know, this is, it's, I've obviously been working on this, making it better, right? Uh, yeah, about that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, not so much, sorry. Like when I wrote this, this presentation, that was all supposed to be the first half and the back half was gonna be me talking about how I'd done all of these ideas and I haven't. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, uh, so this is why, um, yeah, this is my. <laughs> you. Well, yes, that is exactly it. You people keep breaking things. It, it is hey, very I disruptive. <laughs> Everyone but Neil keeps breaking things. It's very disruptive. I had a couple of vacations. It was great. You know, I went away. Uh, there were some shiny objects. I completely rewrote container image publishing because, hey, why not? You know, I wrote a development environment for Bodhi. That was fun. Um, to be fair, both of those were uniquely terrible. <laughs> right, but I did a... I did a bunch of other stuff, so I didn't work on this. And, you know, I don't want to throw the dog under the bus, but mm, it's not looking good for the dog. Uh, here's some kind of real reasons. Uh, so 
Thank you. The tests, this, the responsibility for these things is kind of spread around. I'm on the Fedora quality team. A lot of the stuff I'm talking about does not technically come under my team for historical Red Hat political reasons, which we won't go into. But that makes it awkward, because my manager is not saying, go and fix installability or you're fired. You know, that, that's, that's not how this goes. And kind of related to that lack of prioritization, the team that does own those tests, working on them in Fedora is not their number one priority, is the awkward point there. And we don't have anyone whose job is make RPM debt lint better in Fedora. So that causes problems with this stuff. Uh, this is a thing I started doing recently, which everyone loves, the TLDR slide. If you've just been looking at cat pics for the last half hour, no judgment. This was the summary. We don't test all the stuff. We should test all the stuff. It's hard. I wanted to vent. Thank you for being my support group. And I am very easily distracted, apparently. This is what we've all learned this summer. Yeah. So there we are. I managed to get all those slides in. I'm very proud. Um, and now we can, that's pretty much everything I've got. Uh, questions and answers. Yes, Michael. Um, so given that, you know, like there's all this like backlog and like uh, test failures and so on, as package maintainers, do you want us adding uh, tests or do you prefer we hold off for now? Uh, no, absolutely. I still want packages adding tests. The deal with adding tests as a packager is you ideally should own it. Like don't just add the test, but look at the results. If you think there's a failure that isn't your fault, um, file an issue. There's a Fedora-CI tracker for like general CI issues. File an issue there. But yeah, we do want people adding tests still. Davide. So one thing I've noticed is I'll make a PR on some random package mm -hmm. that I know nothing about. Yep. The test fails. I have no way of knowing if it failed because of my PR or if the test was just broken because the package release is like 97 and uh. clearly it <laughs> is not something people look at very often. Yeah, yeah, that is totally a thing. So there was an interesting thing that happened recently where we did the mass rebuild, which is a thing we do every cycle, where we rebuild every you know binary package in the distro um, and just land them all into Rawhide. That doesn't go through Bodhi because it would explode Bodhi. It's like 10,000 packages. They just get tagged in directly. And we realized that several things had been tagged in where the previous build was backed up in Bodhi because it had failed tests. And so I went through like 50 things like that where I was like, oh yeah, these tests have been broken for four months and nobody cared. Like, so I don't have a great story for you there. Um, you kind of, the easiest thing to do is go and look at previous updates to the package in Bodhi and see if the test failed there. And then if it did, you kind of know I didn't break this, right? It was already broken. Neil. So what do you do when the, when the last time that a package was updated by a human was before Bodhi's records have been deleted? Because <laughs> uh, I encountered one of those this cycle, and that was not fun. Yeah, well, you probably know better than I. What did you do, Neil? I gave up. OK, that is a good answer. I, I, I endorse this. Um, yeah. I just merged it and gave up. You guys are adding greatly to the reasons list. I love this. Like, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, There's a certain point where it's just not worth it anymore. Yeah, you just kind of reset and be like, OK, is it broken now? Is it not? If it's broken, let's just fix it and not worry about what broke it. Yeah. 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 Any more questions? Nope. Okay. Thank you all very thank much you. for coming out.